So here's what we're looking at today. Unflavored gelatin. And this can be found in the Jello section of any grocery store. Um, and what we can do with this is make a traditional uh, gelatin ground for paper. It's a really inexpensive way to customize your paper um, with the sort of um, tinting of colors or uh, sort of a painterly or smoky effect um, for the background of your drawings. I've boiled two cups of water, which is half a quart, and we're going to start with one package of the uh, unflavored gelatin. And I'm going to make sure that the water is boiled. And I'll put the powder in first. And then pour in my full two cups of water. I might take a minute to just dissolve this a little bit here. And as long as there are no big major chunks, it should be fine. Then I'll go ahead and add it, add the rest. And mix it really well. And you can see it, it's going to make uh, quite a lot. Um, so it's usually good to uh, have a few pieces of paper ready that you want to um, size with the gelatin size. And let me take a moment to talk about um, the arches paper. I've used this for a few other things. Um, what it is is pre-stretched cold press watercolor paper. Uh, and cold press, um, I mean, it, it refers to the process, but for our purposes, it means there's a rough surface to the paper. And uh, it's a very high quality, heavy paper um, made to uh, absorb water. Um, and there are other ways, there, there's a process of stretching watercolor paper. So if you have a kind of paper that you, you're, you are really fond of, um, then you can stretch paper on a board instead. But this is sort of the ready-made version of that. So we can just buy this at an art supply store. Uh, if we seal it with the gelatin size, um, it's decreasing the absorbency of the paper. Um, but we can also think about this as a sort of paint, because essentially what we have now is we've mixed a binder. So let's go through materials briefly, um, sort of what we need to get started. So I just mixed my gelatin size, I have that here. Um, this is a leftover um, takeout food cover that I'm going to use as a pan to mix colors. Um, you can use a, a palette that's made for liquid if you want, or an old uh, plate or something like that. Um, I also have a selection of brushes. Most of these are just old um, uh, house paint brushes that I have lying around. And uh, I have a couple of artist brushes because I like the effect. I'll show you how, how they translate. Um, and then I have pigments. Um, the common one that I bet you, you might have lying around someplace is uh, watercolor, tubed watercolor. So I'm going to be using tubed watercolor. These are pigment dispersions. Um, this company, Guerra Paint, makes the pigment dispersions. And they're basically really concentrated um, pigments dispersed in uh, a distilled water solution. But today, since it's more common, I'll just use watercolors. I want to start with sort of a neutral, um, earthy, brownish gray. So I have Payne's gray here. Uh, I just put down titanium white and um, here's some burnt sienna, I think. Burnt sienna. And just a quick peek here. You might be able to see this, um, that it's a very toothy, thick paper. I'm just going to grab one of my uh, house brushes and 
load it up with some of the gelatin size. And let me talk to you through what's going to happen. <clears throat> so it's going to soak into the paper and the paper is going to buckle a little bit and that's okay. As, as it dries, the paper will flatten back out again. So I'm just doing it nice and fast, sort of a, an even layer if I can. It can create nice atmospheric backgrounds. Okay, so there's one, and uh, I think sometimes you can really get away, you can sort of get away with like two layers and then let it dry and flatten back out. Um, and as soon as it's sort of almost flat, then it's ready to do another uh, layer. I'm going to go a little bit more brown with the next layer, and also I'm going to keep it a little more dry, so I'm tapping out some of the excess here. So another thing to like mention here is like why why would we want to do this? And that's a good fair question. Um, why not just use watercolor for example? Like it's kind of looking like watercolor at this point. And the answer is watercolor stays water soluble as you build up layers. Um, so you can sort of re-wet it and that reactivates um, the paint that you laid down. Uh, if you did some line work with water-based ink on top of um, watercolor, there might be some bleeding. So what this is doing is making a nice sealed permanent ground that we could work on top of. Um, so it won't be water soluble um, when it's completely cured. It gives you something exciting to springboard off with your drawing instead of just a raw piece of paper. Um, it, from the very uh, conception of this piece, it makes it interesting and your own instead of sort of the generic white rectangle. So I encourage you guys to be funky, make it unique, make it your own. Use anything within your uh, repertoire of a brushstroke language, dots, dashes, strokes, splashes, flings. Um, make it funky, make it unique. I'm going to let this one dry for about five or ten minutes. Okay, here's another thing about watercolor. Watercolor, you kind of have to work light to dark and preserve the lights. Uh, but with this, we can work um, light over the dark or dark over light. So what you could do, if you wanted to, is do sort of a, a quick sketch underpainting keep it light, keep it smoky, and uh, then you like can be 50% done with the drawing before you even um, dig in with whatever you're thinking of working on top of this with, whether it's charcoal, graphite, ink, um, or even uh, paints. Um, those are all things that you could work on top of this with. One way it could be sort of a smart approach to this is um, if, if you were doing a representational scene, uh, just sort of blocking in like the shadow areas with, with this technique.
I like the light, but um, I want to bring some more lightness out. So that's why I'm using a brighter, whiter color. And like I said, the dry brush technique, I'm going to actually take some uh, paint off. And just sort of drag around with this sort of dry brush. So here I probably have maybe six or so fast layers and I feel like I really like this and uh, it's not too loud where it would distract me from a draw drawing on top of it and yet it's like really interesting and rich. So I'm going to stop here with this one and do some more. Um, one of my students just sort of overloaded it with pigment and it comes out looking really funky and super saturated and that's I think that's a really cool thing I was looking around and I found uh, this old piece which I did um, uh, a semester or so ago and it's just kind of been sitting around but this is the gelatin ground too where I actually started um, drawing in some information information so uh, the other thing to just mention here is um, I used a kind of paper that I like and I stretched the paper onto a board. Um, so I'm not going to show you stretching uh, watercolor paper on a board because there are a lot of um, good videos on it on YouTube. Uh, so you can look up um, stretching watercolor paper and uh, you'll find um, several different ways and any of the different ways um, tend to work so uh, just give, give that a look if you're interested and here's another piece where I sort of tried to do a underpainting some low-lying clouds and sort of a pyramid structure that I'm going to draw into next <laughs> 